Hey folks, Piano Man Steve Lundgren here, creator and founder of the Piano Man Approach online piano course, which of course can be found at pianomanapproach.com, believe it or not, really, really creative URL there. Anyway, today I have an interesting tip for you. Uh, anyone who follows my work knows that I have a three-pronged strategy for playing the piano. First, you got to know your chords, then you got to have a rhythm pattern to plug the chords into. And then you need to know some simple improv stuff so you can fill out all of the spaces around it. What we're looking at today is a special rhythm pattern that is a hybrid of a couple of my kind of more essential rhythm patterns. And I call this a, kind of a, a folk guitar pattern for piano. And here's what I mean by it. Let me just demonstrate it real quick and then I'll show you what I'm doing and, and we'll talk about where it's useful. Okay, so that's kind of what it is in practice. Um, first, let me show you how it works, but this is going to be really good for stuff. Just a quick preview, and we'll, we'll do a little bit more specific demo later. Uh, but this is going to be great for stuff like John Denver, Peter, Paul, and Mary, uh, certain things by Bob Dylan. Uh, a lot of different artists have a smattering of different things. James Taylor will have some things that work with this. Um, the song Landslide by Fleetwood Mac very much fits in this category. Um, and a lot of country music can be played this way as well. So I will give you some more specific examples after I show you how to do it. But what we're doing is uh, mirroring a very common fingering uh, guitar or guitar finger strum that's pretty cool. So let's talk, what are, we, what are the two hands doing? First of all, we have to establish that we're in a tempo. Let's say it's usually going to work in a tempo around this one, two, three, four. Okay. And in the left hand, you're going to be playing eighth notes, one and two and three and four. And generally speaking, you're either going to be alternating in octaves or you're going to be playing the one of a chord and the five of a chord. So when we say that, we mean like, in the key of G, for example, if G is one, one, two, three, four, five, the five is D. So, you know, conversely, if you were in B flat, for example, B flat is one, one, two, three, four, five, is F. So you're either going to be alternating for the most part between one and five, or you're going to be alternating in octaves, which is exactly what the thumb on the guitar player is going to be doing. He's going to be playing one five one five one five one five one five or one 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 one, going in octaves. So at our tempo of one two three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So we're just on a G and a, just alternating between G and D there, just to give you some idea. One da, 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 one and two and three and four and one and. The right hand is going to be playing random notes from the chord, one note at a time usually, and it's going to be in opposing 16th notes. So one E and uh, two E and uh, and all that really matters is that you don't, for the most part, want to play the same note twice. So like, let's say that it's a G chord. So down here, we're going G, D, G, B, G, B. Okay, up here, maybe we're going to play if the notes of a G chord are B, D, and G, for example. Maybe we'll take B and D and just kind of alternate between the two of them like so. And it's going to be... See how it's like left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. So it's alternating between the hands. When you get that up to speed, you get this sound. I recommend that you keep the pedal down 100% of the time and only lift up and come back down 
really quickly when you change to a different chord because you want that nice resonance. It's kind of an this is an acoustic an acoustic guitar pattern, and it's going to you want it to ring just the same way those acoustic strings ring on the guitar. So what I would recommend before you start trying to do it anywhere else is just find G. This is a good range for it, okay? And play it right here. And get the timing down. Because that's what's going to get with, get you with this is the timing. It's not so much, you know, the notes or whatever because it doesn't matter. There's not a specific, there's not specific notes out of the chord you need to hit. It's just about getting the timing between the two hands down. So practice it nice and slow like this. And then try to pick up the, the, the tempo a little bit. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E. When you have the timing down, it's a beautiful thing, and it's just this nice, flowing smooth, almost meditative kind of rhythm pattern. And then if you want to, if you're really comfortable with it, you can play, you can alternate between all three of the notes available. Or you can even work in a, you know, a grace note like an added nine. So in that case, it'd be like a G A, which is the two or the nine of G, for example. So see, it's not that I'm playing any discernible pattern of notes in the right hand. It's just randomly trying to play notes from the chord. And in this case, it was a G added nine. So it's got G, A, B, or D are all available. And I'm going anywhere from this G all the way to that G. And I'm just trying not to play the same note twice. Okay. Once you do that, I, what I would do is practice that. Once you get the timing down, I would practice that in basically all your major and minor chords. Um, you might take a simple, you might take a very simple uh, pattern like one, like we call them the ice cream changes. So it'd be like a one, six, four, five, meaning G, E minor, C, D, and just kind of work your way through it. So like one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now that that's also pretty good. Uh, a pretty good explanation of how do you decide when you're going to be doing octaves or the one five one five. The truth is, it's up to you. You can do either one anytime you want. My rule of thumb tends to be. Uh, that because we're trying to mirror an acoustic guitar here, I try not to let the octaves get much lower than, say, that C. Technically, the lowest note on an acoustic guitar is this, this E right here. Um, so I'll let it slide a couple notes past that. But anything lower than that, I move to a 1-5, one, 1-5, five, one, five, one, five. And if I get any, uh, if I get any higher than, say this B and this F sharp, then I'll move to an octave situation like C would be an octave, C sharp, D, E flat, E. And then from there, I'll probably go to the one five, one five, one five, one five, one five, one five, one five octave. That's just my little rule of thumb for range. So I'll tend to do octaves from C through E, and I'll tend to do one, th one five, one five from F all the way up to a B. So 
you can do it however you wish. And it doesn't matter. This The same pattern applies whether it's a minor chord or a diminished chord or an augmented. So, for example, if you're on a diminished chord, um, like let's say it's a C diminished chord. Octaves. If it was a G diminished chord, since I do the 1-5-1-5, one, five, one, five, remember a diminished chord would be G... So the five is flatted and I'd be there. But the concept is always the same. One and two and in the left, and then you're alternating on 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a. Just trying not to repeat the same note. So it's a pretty cool little technique, and it's got a really big, flowing, smooth sound, and I really like it. So... Where can you use this? Well, I picked it up on accident because I'm a big John Denver nerd, so let me just give you a few examples from his catalog first and foremost. So his version of leaving on a jet plane is where I really picked it up. So it's a we're on a D9 chord here, so I'm just alternating Ds. And I've got A, C, D, E, and F sharp to work with. And there's a suspension occasionally, so I've got a G there as well, so. All my bags are packed, ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. Hate to wake you up to say goodbye. So that's how I copied what he was doing for that song. Um, he's got other ones, like he had a little trilogy of people leaving, um, uh, songs about people leaving. So like, um, it's by far the hardest thing I've ever, wait a minute here. It's by far the hardest thing I've ever done. Be so in love with you and so alone. Follow me where I go. Make it part of you to be a part of me. Follow me up and down, all the way and all around. Take my hand and say you'll follow me. So it worked really well for those kinds of songs. Now, another uh, really, really iconic one that comes to mind for me would be, um, let me see here. Took my love and I took it down. Da 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 da. And I saw my reflection in the snow covered hill. And the landslide bring me down. Now I've been afraid of changing. I live my life around you. Works beautifully for that song. This also shows you another option that's less common, but uh, like let's say that you're playing a G chord and it might go to a D over an F sharp chord, for example, with an F sharp in the bass. Well, you can either play octave F sharps like that, or you can alternate between F sharp and D, because it's a D chord. It's a special circumstance, it's just an option. But the pattern itself works beautifully for that song, Landslide. And, and, and finally, just to give you an idea, it works with a lot of country music too. Um, one that comes to mind, Garth Brooks has a song, a, kind of a famous song called uh, Much Too Young to Feel This Damn Old. So it'd be like a G added nine chord. A minor, D, C, G, D. This old highway's getting longer. Seems there ain't no end in sight. To sleep would be best. I just can't afford to rest. Gotta ride in Denver tomorrow night. Okay, 
It might even work on a song that it's not a perfect uh, match for in terms of uh, the record, but something like The Dance by Garth Brooks could probably work. You could go looking back on the memory of the dance we share beneath the stars above. And now, glad I didn't know the way it all would end. So, you see, the thing is, when you learn rhythm patterns, the whole point is not to try and copy everyone exactly, you know, and have be rigid and have to play everything exactly the same way every time. It's about giving yourself tools that you can reach for and have a fresh experience every time. And that means sometimes you can put your own spin on something. Sometimes you'll just like the way a song sounds with a particular rhythm pattern that you figured out, and it doesn't necessarily match the recording 100%, but you like the way it sounds when you're playing it by yourself on piano. So anyway, I love this rhythm pattern. I use it for a lot of different things, and uh, I just want to send a shout-out to the late, great John Denver for uh, giving me so many beautiful songs to try to figure out how to play, and and that's the inspiration for how I discovered this on piano it was copying his guitar work and then i just found that it was uh, useful for a lot of other people's stuff too so hope you find it useful too and most of all i hope you find it fun because my personal mantra has been ever since i got into this racket if you're not having fun when you're making music you're doing it wrong to learn more about rhythm patterns chords and improv and all of the amazing stuff that uh that makes playing this instrument so much fun and unlocks thousands and thousands and thousands of songs for you with the same uh, group of relatively simple techniques. You can always head over to pianomanapproach.com, check out my free stuff and my webinar and all that good stuff and see if it's a good fit for you. No pressure. I ain't no salesman. I'm just a musician. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking now. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a good experience with this. And, uh, As I said before, if you're not having fun when you're making music, you're doing it wrong. I'll talk to you again soon, gang.